Two days in an underwater cave without oxygen three months ago, Zisco Gracha experienced what he describes as every diver's worst nightmare, he found himself without oxygen in an underwater cave, relying on an air pocket for survival. As hours turned into days he realized he might not be found in time. On Saturday 15th of April, Zisco Gracha slipped into the water in Mallorca for a routine dive. The geology teacher spent most weekends exploring and mapping the island's complex system of underwater caves. Mallorca is much more beautiful underground than above the ground, he says. Image copyright per Grand Mundi image captions Isco Gracha, pictured carrying four tanks of air which last for an hour each. He and his dive buddy, Gillam Mascaro, wanted to explore Sapica a cave with numerous chambers one kilometer from the entrance of the labyrinth. They swam underwater for an hour to get there. While Gracha spent time collecting rock samples, Mascaro swam off to chart a nearby chamber. It was as they headed for home that several things went wrong at once. Gracha met Mascaro by chance at a junction, and they stirred up silt from the ground, making it difficult to see. Image copyright Tony Sire Image caption Cave divers must always set up a continuous guideline to the surface they then realize that their guideline, a narrow nylon wire which led back to the entrance, had either broken or slipped. The wire is for guiding purposes. It is left behind once you enter the cave and you can follow it out again afterwards, Gracha, 54, says. We can only guess some rocks had fallen on it. We spent a precious hour trying to find it by touch, but without success. By this point, the pair were in grave danger. They had consumed the oxygen they had brought to get them in and out, as well as most of their emergency oxygen. Image copyright Tony Sire Image caption It is easy to kick up sediment in Mallorca's underwater caves. Luckily, Gracha remembered that other divers had talked of an air pocket in a chamber nearby. He tugged Muscaro to it and there they talked through their options. Both knew they only had enough air for one of them to make it out. We decided I would stay and Gillam would go for help. He was skinnier than me and needed less air for breathing. I was also more experienced at breathing cave air, which has higher carbon dioxide levels, Gracha says. They planned an alternative, longer route out on a map. Mascaro would have to travel along some of it without a guideline and could potentially get lost. It would have been like trying to drive a car in a very foggy night, Gracha says. Gillam was reluctant to leave me on my own, but we knew it was our only chance. Image copyright Tony Sire Image caption The caves were flooded when sea levels rose more than 60,000 years ago once Mascaro had left. Gracha took off most of his equipment and explored the chamber. It was about 80 meters, 260 feet, long and 20 meters wide, with a gap of 12 meters between the water and the ceiling. He realized the water at the surface of the lake was drinkable. He also discovered a large flat rock and pulled himself out of the water to rest. Gracha decided he would have to manage without light. Two of his three torches no longer worked and the third was low on battery. I only turned it on when I went to pee or to climb down to get fresh water, he says. Media playback is unsupported on your device media caption Listen, Zisco Gracha describes how the troubles began There was little he could do now but wait, in complete darkness, and hope to be rescued. I asked myself why this had happened to me now after so many years of diving. Gracha says. But I was hopeful during the first seven or eight hours as I thought Gillam would make it out. As time passed, though, I started to lose hope. I thought, Gillam has got lost and died and no one knows I am down here. Gracha began to think about his loved ones above ground. I have two children, a son of 15 and a daughter of 9. I thought about how they were too young to lose their father and what would happen to them, he says. Although he managed to remain calm, he began experiencing the effects of breathing in high levels of carbon dioxide. While the air we breathe above ground is 0.04% carbon dioxide, in the cave the level was as high as 5%. I had a headache and although I was exhausted through lack of oxygen it was impossible to sleep. My brain was whirring, he says. 
Image Copyright Tony Sirer Image Caption It is easy to become disorientated in Mallorca's submerged caves His mind began playing tricks on him. I got the feeling there were lights in the lake and I heard the sound of bubbles of a diver emerging. But when I turned my head I saw nothing. It was a hallucination. Gracha lost track of time but after what felt like days he heard a loud noise above him. He realized Mascaro must have made it out. I thought at first I could hear the sound of tanks being filled with air for the rescue team. Later I realized they must be trying to drill through the rock. I was really happy as I realized they were looking for me. But then the noises stopped and Gracha faced his darkest moment. Image copyright Tony Sirer Image caption Gracha, pictured on an earlier dive, began to hallucinate as the hours passed I thought about how I could die in the way divers most fear, without food or air, he says. My light was almost spent and I knew I wouldn't be able to climb down to get water in the dark. I decided to swim across to where I left my gear and get a knife. I wanted to have it as a last resort if I needed to choose whether to die quickly or slowly. Shortly after this Gracha thought he heard the sound of bubbles again. I looked and saw a diver's light that seemed to be getting brighter and brighter, he says. I thought it was another hallucination but then I realized it was real and I saw a helmet emerging. It was Bernard Clammer, an old friend. I jumped into the water and embraced him. He was asking me how I was, and telling me that he had been afraid I had died. Image copyright per Grandmundi image captions Isco Gracha, right, pictured with his friend and rescuer Bernard Clammer on an earlier diving trip Gracha learned that Muscaro had managed to raise the alarm but that rescue efforts had been hampered by poor visibility. Rescuers had then tried to drill a hole through the rocks to supply him with food and water, which explained the noises he had heard but this attempt had also failed. Finally, Clammer and fellow diver John Freddy had made it through, after waiting a day for the silt to settle. Gracha's ordeal was still not over. Clammer had to leave him to contact the rescue team, but gave him some glucose pouches to boost his energy levels. It would take eight more hours to get me out of that cave, but they were eight happy hours. Gracha says. Gracha was given air enriched with oxygen to breathe and slowly guided to the entrance. He emerged late on Monday, 17th of April, 60 hours after he went in. Gillam Muscaro was there to meet him. We embraced but didn't have time to speak as they took me off in an ambulance. It hit me physically as soon as I left the water. My temperature was 32 C, so I was at risk of hypothermia. I was given pure oxygen to breathe overnight. Image copyright Twitter slash at 112 Isles Baylor's image captions Isco Gracha, pictured as he emerged following his ordeal Gracha had kept his emotions in check the whole way through his experience. You have to be able to control your emotions with diving. But the next day I watched coverage of the big rescue operation on TV and I cried. I was so thankful. Gracha has not turned his back on diving, despite his narrow escape. A month after the incident he went back to Sapika. He has even visited the chamber where he was stuck for so long. I don't hold any grudges against that cave, it's not like it's the cave's fault, he says. Gracha says he will continue mapping Mallorca's underwater heritage. My children don't like it much but they don't tell me not to do it, he says. I have spent 24 years exploring underground. It's in my blood. Listen to Zisco Garcia talking to a new and on Outlook, on the BBC World Service. See also the cave divers who went back for their friends. Join the conversation. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter.